The Mueller report on the Russia investigation is going public today, but parts of that report will be redacted. The death of a Cowlitz County Sheriff's deputy is hitting the law enforcement community hard. One officer from across the country is paying tribute to the fallen deputy. Boeing CEO took a ride on a 737 MAX jet. Those jets have been grounded worldwide following two deadly crashes. 5 a.m. on our Thursday morning. Welcome to Creme 2 Morning News. I'm Jen York. And I'm Brittany Bailey. Well, the Mueller report is going public today after a two-year investigation. Robert Mueller investigated whether there was any Russian meddling in the 2016 election. Attorney General William Barr is expected to release a redacted version of that report this morning. It is a move that is drawing backlash from many Democratic leaders. They say they want to see the full 400-page report without any edits. Attorney General Barr is not allowing the facts of the Mueller report to speak for themselves, but is trying to bake in the narrative about the report to the benefit of the White House. Barr released a four-page summary of that report last month. In it, he wrote that Mueller found no evidence of coordination between Russia and the Trump campaign. But Mueller made no determination on whether the president had obstructed justice. He left that up to the attorney general, who determined the president had not obstruct, obstructed justice. Meanwhile, President Trump says he is confident ahead of today's release. Well, attorney General William Barr and Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein will hold a press conference about that report this morning. Rosenstein oversaw the investigation after Mueller's appointment in May of 2017. We do plan to air that press conference live here on Creme 2 starting at 630 this morning. Shortly after Barr's press conference, the report will be delivered to Congress on CDs. Then it will end up on the special counsel's website for the public to read. The attorney general says the redacted grand jury material includes information that could impact ongoing investigations. It also includes classified material and evidence against people not criminally charged. Now coming up on 502 on this Thursday, we want to check in on our weather forecast. We will send things over to Evan Arani in the Weather Center this morning. Bertie and Jen, good morning. We're starting off our day with a couple showers, mainly around uh, the Cascades. Pushing over them is a little bit of a challenge for some of these uh, systems, though. You can see what's happening right now across those Cascades and mainly showers pushing up toward the northern third of Washington. But aside from that, very little activity around the Spokane and Coeur d'Alene area. No rain over the Idaho Panhandle, which is kind of the opposite situation of what we had seen yesterday. Now what we've got outside today, though, is going to be a warm day. Take a look at these forecast highs by 5 p.m. We are expecting a high of 80 degrees down in Richland, 75 in Othello, 73 in Moses Lake. Over towards central Washington or to eastern Washington, Spokane will be at 65 and in North Idaho, Coeur d'Alene at 64. So these forecast highs are about 10 degrees warmer than what we would expect them to be for a normal day uh, here in about mid April. Uh, so enjoy the warmer temperatures that come about today and that are expected to continue as the day or as the week goes on. Really, here's a look outside. You can see still pretty quiet. Uh, the sun's still waiting to come up. We've got about another 45 minutes on that right now. Temperature outside is at 43 degrees. Winds have calmed down significantly from yesterday and are now at seven miles miles an hour. It is 5.03. I'll send things over to Cody for a check of traffic. Good morning. There's some construction happening in Spokane today. The eastbound lane of Crestline will be closed from Brooklyn to Willie. Crews are doing some utility work in the area. That is all the updates I have, but if you have any questions, you can head on over to our website at crim.com. Brittany and Jen, back to you. Cody, thank you. Just ahead of 504 now, more than two dozen people are involved in the investigation into the death of a Cowlitz County Sheriff's Deputy, Justin DeRozier. And this morning, the autopsy results are back for both the deputy and his killer. Brian Butts fatally shot Deputy DeRozier Saturday in Kalama. On Sunday, law enforcement officers shot and killed Butts. Law enforcement officers are looking into threats and statements they say the suspect's parents made after the shooting. Well, we are learning there will be a memorial for Deputy Justin DeRozier. It will be at 1 o'clock next Wednesday. It will be held at the University of Portland, and it is open to the public. Well, there are much higher rates of PTSD among law enforcement than the general public. That's according to the National Alliance on Mental Illness. And that is why organizations, including Behind the Badge, offer support to families, agencies, and communities. 
Sergeant Eric Bunday with the Hillsborough Police Department in Oregon works closely with those affected by line of duty deaths. He says when people look at an officer, they often see the uniform first. But at the end of the day, we're human beings. Um, our hearts hurt just like everybody else's does. Um, and when one of us falls in the line of duty, it's a death in our family. I didn't personally Sergeant Bunday says whether it is through donations or being there for funeral processions, the community can show support for law enforcement. A police officer several states away has made it his mission to memorialize fallen first responders, and this week he painted Deputy DeRozier. Officer Johnny Castro is a forensic artist in Philadelphia. He has created hundreds of digital portraits of first responders killed in the line of duty. Castro says most of the time his portrait is just one small piece in the effort to honor someone. I've seen monuments erected in hometowns like within a year or two after the officers killed just so they're not forgotten, like especially in Justin's case. I mean, he was the first officer killed in like 150 some years. Any anytime anybody can contribute something to help remember them is, uh, I mean, it's a plus for law enforcement. So I'm, I'm happy to help. Castro says he will be sending free copies of the portrait to Deputy DeRozier's family and to the Cowlitz County Sheriff's Office. To see more of his work, you can check out Johnny Castro Art on Facebook. Investigators in Colorado are calling off the search for the body of missing mom Kelsey Barrett. She was last seen on Thanksgiving Day and she has ties here to the Inland Northwest. Police say they have not found her or any evidence related to her death. They have been searching a landfill since February 26th. The father of Barrett's child and her fiance Patrick Frazee is charged with her murder. Investigators believe he killed Barrett and burned her body. Frazee was arrested on December 21st and has been in custody ever since. His arraignment hearing was postponed to May 24th because of ongoing forensic testing. Boeing CEO Dennis Mullenberg took a test flight on an upgraded 737 MAX jet. Those jets have been grounded worldwide after two deadly crashes. Hello from Boeing Field, where our talented test pilots have now completed 120 737 MAX flights totaling more than 203 hours of airtime. Well, that is Mullenberg talking about the 737 MAX test with the software update for the MCAS. Mullenberg says Boeing is making steady progress toward FAA certification. The MCAS has become a focal point in the investigations of two deadly MAX crashes. Well, meanwhile, United Airlines is considering seeking compensation from Boeing. That is because of the 737 MAX grounding. Airline leaders say they are using bigger and less fuel efficient jets to replace MAX jets on domestic routes. United has 14 MAX planes in its fleet, and the airline does not expect to get them back before July. Also, the delivery of 16 additional MAX jets expected this year might be delayed. Time now, coming up on 508 on this Thursday. Well, do you remember Willie Water? That's the Spokane statue that stood over the water reservoir near Sacred Heart for decades. Well, this morning, we're telling you where he is now. A Spokane mural on North Monroe is raising some questions. We'll introduce you to the man behind the art. Inside, we have another pretty calm day ahead, but showers are on the way tonight and to tomorrow. Find out how much we're expecting after the break.